that, this, these data are a bit old, so it's nearer 60% now. But there are many other uses of oil. One of them is particularly important, this green one here, feedstock. Oil is the main ingredient, the main feedstock, in many, many things that are important to our civilization. Fertilizers, it's the main feedstock. Pharmaceuticals, the main feedstock. <coughs> pesticides, the main ingredient in pesticides. Plastics, the main ingredient in plastics. When the crunch comes, which is imminent, most of those uses are going to be more important than transport. If we don't have the pesticides, we don't have the food. If we don't have the pharmaceuticals, uh, we, we, we have epidemics and so on. <laughs> the other uses, lubricants, home heating, um, uh, etc., etc. The third reason is that transport has been growing much faster than all the other uses. Indeed, before 1991, transport was not the major user of oil. Uh, the other, it, it used less than half the oil, but now it uses an increasing amount, um, increasing more rapidly. So transport is going to be the most affected by oil depletion. And within transport, the mode that will be the most affected is aviation. And again, there are three reasons. Rail will be the least affected. But let's consider aviation. The first reason is that it's an intrinsically inefficient mode. It uses more energy per person kilometer or ton kilometer than the other modes. That's assuming comparable levels of occupancy of the vehicles or the planes. Uh, there's a chart showing that, a couple of charts, uh, people on the, moving people on the left, moving freight on the right. Um, the, se the second reason is that there is less tax on aviation fuel than on any other transport fuel. And because there is less tax, the fuel is actually more exposed to the, commodity, the basic commodity price. In the UK, for example, 70% of what you pay at the pump is tax. Here it's about, well, Alberta it's less, but in Canada, wide, it's about 40%, 45%. In the US, it's about 30%. In the UK, it's 70%. So when the price of oil changes, only that last 30% is affected. That's why the US has been having much bigger increases than we have been having recently, because a smaller share of their tax is of uh, their price is tax. Aviation, it's not even the 25% that it is on road fuels in the US, it is 5% or even less. The aviation industry has been very skillful at getting tax exemptions or not getting taxes applied, but now that's come back to haunt them because they um, are suffering the full brunt of. Um, of the increase in, in crude oil prices. So whereas gasoline in Canada in the last year has gone up by only 25%, roughly, and diesel fuel has gone up by only 35%, roughly, jet fuel has doubled in price in the last year. The other reason is that there ain't an alternative for jet fuel. You can think of alternatives for um, the other modes. I'm going to get into electricity as the alternative to oil products for, for surface modes. Um, you, you can um, look at the front of the book and I'll come to it later as well, and, and wind is a viable alternative, or at least a supplement for marine modes, but, um, and rail of course, uh, there's a lot of electric rail already, not so much in North America, but in other parts of the world, but for aviation, there isn't an alternative. 
you basically have to use oil, an oil product. So that's why um, aviation is in such uh, dire straits. Um, the industry was hoping, hoping that it would, for the second year, for a long time, have a profitable situation this year. It is, given present trends, going to have ca catastrophic loss. Um, I won't go into this, but um, here is a quote from the head of American Airlines. The airline industry, as it is constructed today, was not built to withstand oil prices of 125 a barrel. Today it's 135 a barrel. These are the US airlines that have gone out of business uh, in the last few months. Um, worldwide, 24 airlines have gone out of business since March. Now, there are many hundreds of airlines, but uh, we're, we're seeing the, the challenge. Future aviation is going to have to be a lot more fuel efficient. It is going to involve very large planes. This is the largest uh, passenger plane in the world, just gone into service. Uh, the A380 produced by Airbus, and it uses depending on the occupancy, 25 to 40 percent less fuel than your typical plane in the air. So these large, well-occupied planes, this carries in its full configuration 820 people. Uh, this is in service. This is the Singapore Airlines version that took the first one, although it didn't take the maximum configuration. Um, a a reversal, reversal to um, uh, turboprops, which of course are still in use, uh, in use. Um, turboprops are about 30% more efficient than jet planes, uh, plane for plane. Piston engines are even more efficient than turboprops, and that is a possibility as well, but nobody's using piston much anymore. Planes will be flying medium distances. For a short distance, a plane most of the energy is getting the plane in the air. And for a short distance, that takeoff is a big part of the journey. But for a very long distance, you get another problem, and that is they have to get so much fuel up into the air. And so what you get, and this is showing different payloads, but what you get is an inverted U-shaped curve. So there is a peak of around four, three, four, five thousand kilometers. These are nautical miles, but three or four, five thousand kilometers. Or I should say a trough, the, 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 the maximum or the minimum energy use. So what's going to happen? The last thing that's going to happen is we're going to have many fewer airports. Already, you can't fly from Pittsburgh to Europe. Airlines are cutting out trips. The, a few months ago, there were eight destinations you could fly to from Pittsburgh to Europe. Now there are none. In our book, we suggest that the current number of airports in the US um, that fly scheduled flights on a regular basis, which is about 330, is going to come down to about 30 over the next few decades. Very good question. Will Edmonton Airport continue? Probably not, we would guess. Calgary will be Alberta's airport, and you'll have a high-speed rail line from Edmonton to Calgary Airport. Uh, there will be maybe four or five airports in Canada. So if you hear plans about increasing the capacity of Edmonton's airport, worry whose money is being spent. <laughs> I said that at the other extreme, you will have um, uh, rail least affected. And rail can be fueled electrically, and not only electrically, it could be fueled renewably electrically. And you have one of the best examples of the world in Alberta. Calgary's sea train is 100% fueled by wind power. 100%. Every year, the general manager of Calgary Transit negotiates the purchase of the output of 12 wind turbines up in the Rockies and um, adjusted at the end of the year according to how much has been consumed. 